welcome to the One to Nine podcast for interesting insights and knowledge from animals and other beings within multidimensional realms. I'm sitting here with Diana. My name is Karen. And today we're going to talk about the pig consciousness, which Diana is sitting over there laughing about. I, I have been on a journey um, of trying to awaken my connections to all things um, as an artist, as a visionary. And years ago, maybe 20 years ago now, I stopped eating pork um, because porks, the meat was too, um, too human-like, really. That was the main reason that the, the, the pigs were too human-like. So that's why I started stopped eating it 20 years ago. <coughs> anyway, um, I've had other friends as they awaken and start communicating with higher beings um, come to me and tell me that the pigs started talking to them and they could not eat pork anymore either. And so I had warned Diana that this might happen to her. She's a avid pork eater and... I said, just be careful. As you open up more of your channels, the pigs may come and talk to you. And sure enough, one day, and I'm going to let Diana talk from here. Yeah, sure enough, one day, um, about two months ago, uh, my husband, uh, he's a huge fan of sausage, right? And a lot of sausage is made up of pork. So he had bought some breakfast pork sausage and I had made that for breakfast one day and you know I ate some it was very tasty and so the next I was looking forward to eating it the next day unfortunately before I could actually get to it and eat it for breakfast the next day uh, all these pigs showed up in my head it was this, like this huge field there were hundreds of pigs there and they're just standing there looking at me and they're saying don't eat me don't eat me so i couldn't eat the pork sausage that i had been looking forward to i mean i was a little bit disappointed but i mean i just couldn't eat it right and since then i've not been able to eat any pork okay i, I should i should qualify that by saying it's not that i can't it's i've made a decision not to because there's something in me that that says, okay, if you're going to eat pork again, you're going to go backwards. So I just, plus, you know, I mean, I don't know. It's not, I don't find it appetizing anymore. Um, and, uh, and uh, the pork, I call it the pork collect, the pig collective. Okay. I see them a lot in my head and usually they're just standing around. There was one time though, they started stamping their feet like they were cheering. Like, you know, if you're in a performance and people really like the performers, they start stamping their feet like for an encore, right? This is what the pigs were doing. And it was because something I had said or done, but for the life of me, I can't, f I've forgotten what it is that they were, they were stamping their feet about. Uh, maybe it'll come to me later, but I've forgotten what it is. But anyway, it's like they're still there in my head, you know, and they're just standing there, some milling about. Um, I don't know why they continue to be in my head, but maybe they're going to be telling me something. Yeah, could could be very interesting. Wait, I have a question for you. Are you actually seeing them in your head, or are you just envisioning them? Or are they actually in the little space in your head? <laughs> I need to know. Or are they, or are they just, because when I envision, I, and I see things, I don't feel like it's in my head. I feel like I'm just, you know, I, 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 you know, I see a pig, but I don't, it's like it's out there, sort of in this esoteric way. It's not like in my head. I'm just okay. trying to clarify. Right. Um, I don't it's know. It's my imagination, my yes, vision. Yes, yes, it is. It is my imagination. But I feel that my imagination is in my head. Yeah. But you know, I mean, if you're, yeah, you're, you're right. If you, if I, 
were to like all the things that I see, right? Um, my head would be have been exploded by now <laughs> just because there's so many things that are supposedly fitting in there. Well, what you're encountering is a very dimensional world, much more dimensional than the, you know, the three dimensional world that we live in. So these things can appear. You know, I mean, in a, in our three D world, we can't fit a, a couple hundred pigs in our head. So, <laughs> but in the you know the multi dimensional world, you can fit three hundred pigs in your head or 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 out there, you know, in your mind easily. They could fit anywhere. Right. You could fit them in a thimble. Yeah, I guess you could, but then they'd be really small. <laughs> <laughs> now, are these hogs or are these little piglets? No, they're not piglets. They're just regular pigs. But okay, they're medium-sized pigs. Okay. They're not they're not super big and they're not piglets. And what are they What are they doing? They're just standing around. They're just standing around right now. Yeah. And they're waiting. You feel like they're waiting for something? I don't know. No, not now. They're not waiting for something now. They're kind of like happy with the way things are. Do they have anything to say besides that? Ah, it's like, oh, we're glad you stopped eating us. Well, I have a question for the pigs. Because um, one of the things, one of the reasons that I stopped eating them was that the vibration of the meat, because of the way the pigs are raised and um, for food in this country, in this modern world, are is a lower vibration than... I'm at right now, or I'm trying to become, you know, we're, you know, my body needs higher vibration food, and the pig could have been a high vibrating food, but it's not right now. It's a low vibrating food, and, you know, my sense is that if even one pig is treated poorly, they're all lower vibration as a result of it, so there's not really such a thing as, you know, uh, sustainably raised and ethically you know treated pigs they're all in a basically collective a grid that unites them all and their vibration and so i don't know it's and so when i was eating um anything of a uh, lower vibration than where i'm at right now with my own physical being I would feel like I'm being slightly electrocuted, you know, because it's the wrong frequency or something, the wrong energy for me. I don't know, but I don't have that feeling when I don't eat meat. Because it's not so much... But I'm interested if the pigs, what the pigs might have to say, or if they could answer that question through you about whether or not they're asking to not eat them because of the way they're treated or because they are too human-like, or what is their reason for saying that? Hmm, this is actually quite interesting because I'm asking them this and they seem to be thinking it over. Now I realize that pigs are highly intelligent, so I would have thought they would have an answer to this. But I'm contrasting this to sort of like the lobster collective. So I'm segueing into <laughs> the lobster collective again. I see a, a, lobsters on the ocean floor, and this happened about two months ago. Well, maybe not two months ago, about a month ago, end of September. The lobsters started talking to me, and they said, eat us, eat us. And so I, and this kind of re relates to your question, right? Mm -hmm. Because the lobsters then told me, okay, you know, eat us and your consciousness will be expanded. Um, but the pigs didn't say anything like that to me. And they're, they're still thinking over this question. And I don't know if I'm going to get any kind of answer from them. But the lobsters clearly said, eat us, your consciousness will be expanded. And they gave me an example. Like, okay, you'll be going from like a, a tiny dark room into a huge room that's filled with sunlight if you eat us and so <clears throat> sure enough that kind of happened right both and me and karen so 
Well, let me the just... Pig, pigs are still... I don't know. I'm not getting ans any answer from the pigs. I'm not getting an answer. They're just eat. They're, they're, they're just standing there eating. <laughs> Doing their own thing. Doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe they don't really care. Maybe the pigs I see in... Maybe the pigs I see... Um, they're free from all this mm -hmm. because nobody's going to be, I mean, they're not raised to be eaten. Right. Nobody's killing them. Nobody's eating them. So but they again, were just like almost pig angels that came and they're not the actual pigs themselves. Yeah, but again, on but, but again, if they're, if they're highly intelligent, you'd think they would feel some responsibility to answer the question, to answer the question and, and towards other pigs who are being treated this way, you know, raised for food, blah, 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 killed, and um, so I don't know. Maybe they just need time to think about this. So going back to that lobster consciousness thing, because I really have stepped away from eating seafood for a similar reason. And um, where the vibration I just didn't feel was high enough. And so when these lobsters said, eat me, eat me, and they had something to offer, I got this sense that they were offering us the gift of a shift in consciousness of hydrogen. And they're helping to actually transform that very essential building block of our bodies, of our humanity, of our earth, through the ocean. And by eating a lobster, you actually bring that consciousness into your own being, um, of that elevated sort of dis divine um, calling of the lobsters right now. Now, I personally wasn't called to eat more than one lobster. <laughs> and I felt like with that one lobster, you know, I I received the gifts and that was enough for me and I don't need to eat another lobster. And I um So how did how did you perceive them? How did you perceive the gifts that they that they gave you? I just I, you know, I, for me I just felt a general expansion, you know, like a, a, a just a general oneness more with the oceans and the ocean life and um, just a general expansion. I um, often perceive things in that way where it's just all of a sudden I'm feeling maybe the hydrogen aspects of my own body, the water aspects of my own body are now um, have a slightly different divine expression. Um, of a little bit more expansion. This is this is actually kind of interesting. Okay, there's a couple of things I want to say, and I hope I don't forget them while I'm talking, because, okay, so we ate lobsters together the first time, right? Yes, and the second time. Oh, the second time too, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Well, anyway, the first time, it's like. I I saw the the lobster collective, and they they weren't they were saying you know eat me eat me but also they were kind of jumping up and saying oh pick me pick me pick me because it was like a real honor for them. So anyway, uh, the next morning after we'd eaten the lobsters, I could feel them actually kind of like they'd been digested and they were kind of like going through my body. And then I could feel myself on the ocean floor looking at stuff like through lobsters' eyes. And um, yeah, I mean, I still picture that sometimes. But anyway, the second time, and this is the weird part, um, again, the same thing happened, right? I wake up in the morning after eating them and I feel them going through my body the lobster consciousness and I'm down in the ocean floor again but this time it's like I can actually breathe the water 
and which is kind of weird because I'm thinking, oh my God, it's like I'm underwater here and I'm breathing, you know? Okay, which reminded me of a friend of mine, this was maybe like 30 years ago, who died of cancer in Vancouver, Canada. And shortly after she died, 30 years ago, I had a dream that she was, we were both on a sinking ship. Half the ship was underwater and she was in the underwater part. And I was above water. And there was kind of like this iron door separating us. And I, I knew, like, if I went to where she was, I, I wouldn't be able to breathe, right? But she was perfectly happy underwater, she, fine. So, sort of like this, the lobster, the eating of the lobsters and the lobster consciousness and breathing underwater, that reminded me of that dream. And so like the thing that I had thought about when I was saying I don't want to forget anything is I really don't like being in the ocean. I'm kind of scared of stuff that's in there. Um, like sharks and various other things that can get to you and slimy things and jellyfish and so um, I really don't like swimming in the ocean however um, Karen had told me about a swimming with dolphins retreat and thinking about that I thought wow this would be really cool you know and I didn't have any so like fears about oh you know I'll be I'll be in the water I'll be in the ocean right so I don't know something happened Somehow. oh maybe the lobster consciousness made a little shift yeah so I was reading um, a book the earth earth the cosmos and you and they talked about the dolphins in the book, um, this is a book that's channeled from Archangel Michael about 20 years ago, and they were talking about how the dolphins um, were highly sensitive beings, um, highly intelligent and sensitive beings, and they were getting ready to exit Earth because of the, um, mostly the, you know, the, the waters are just too much for them, you know, it's the the underground nuclear tests, the sonars, the <clears throat> increased boating industries, um, the litter, everything is getting to be too much for their intelligence and sensitivities. And so they're in the process of exiting them and the whales. Um, and I thought about that. And it was written 20 years ago, so I don't know if things have changed since then, but I'm kind of curious to tap into these dolphins when we go out there and you know see if they really are still exiting or if, if anything's changed interesting yeah it is really interesting now when you say exiting do you mean that they will live on in another form elsewhere yes mm -hmm. so that's the that was the sense I got it that the just not going to be living on earth anymore um, which seems kind of sad, but it things yeah. might have changed since then. I don't know, or you know, right? But we are getting more and more populated on this earth, and it may be that some of these extra sensitive beings can't can't exist hmm. at the same time. But I'm glad they're still here, and we can go yeah. visit them. Right. This will be my first time swimming with the dolphins too. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This will be an adventure for sure. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll be curious to see if you're swimming under the water for lo long periods of time with your new lobster uh, consciousness. Ah, maybe. Actually, you know, thinking about it doesn't bother me so much anymore, you know. Going into the ocean? Yeah, or going underwater. That's awesome. Maybe the lobster consciousness was priming, priming right. you for this trip. That's awesome. Thank you for tuning in to today's podcast. We had a very lovely discussion with the Pig Collective on what we should call ourselves. But we have a creative field around us that's much larger than that and much more inclusive, and they came up with a new name, 
the one to nine podcast. We hope you tune in regularly. And if you would like to sign up for our newsletter, please visit us at one to nine podcast.com. Have a great day.